Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth from Organized Chaos, and I'm back today with another planner video, yay! Um, because I wanted to um, show you some of the ways that I like to do what I'm going to call functional decorations in my teacher slash life planner. Um, so um, I get a lot of people who um, say that they just don't have the time to um, do the kinds of decorations in my planner that I do or they're just plain not interested. And um, if you're not the kind of person who enjoys doing this kind of thing, then um, I hope you'll stick around anyway because a lot of the decorations that I do in my planner are things that actually are functional and effective for helping me better um, make sense of my days, make sense of my lessons, and keep everything organized more efficiently. So um, although I do, as you can see, this is my first week of summer break, so it's very different, and I'll show you what a regular week looks like in a second. But um, I do do some non-functional decorating when I have the time and I feel so inclined. And that's because I'm a crafty person. I, I enjoy doing creative things. I used to be a really big paper scrapbooker as a kid and a teenager. Um, so I enjoy that kind of thing. But even if you're not into all of that extra sort of cutesy creative stuff, there are a lot of simple supplies that you can use. It doesn't take a lot of time and it will actually make your um, lesson planning and life planning more effective. So I wanted to show you some ways that you can use those in your planner. So um, first of all, if you haven't seen the flip through of last year's planner, the 2016-17 school year planner, I'll leave a link um, down below and um, you can go check that out to see all of my weekly and monthly spreads that I did this past um, school year. Um, I'll show you um, just so you can see. And not every week looks like this because I had field day one day and um, I didn't have a lot of other information that I needed to keep uh, for this week because it was the last week of school. So it, this is a little bit more sparse than normal, but it does have a lot of different supplies that I do typically use, um, like washi tape, stickers, scrapbook paper, um, and things like that, and different colored pens. So um, I'm going to go to a blank week now and just show you some um, tips and techniques and ideas for how to use some things for functional decorations. Um, so um, before I get into all of this, if you haven't already, go to um, my blog caldwellorganizedchaos.com and um, I have a new free email course that's all about lesson planning. Everything from scope and sequence all the way down to this kind of weekly lesson planning um, and it takes you through in each email the different steps and all of my tips for how to do and more of the content side and the formatting to make lesson planning better and um, easier for you once you get everything set up. So um, if you go over there, you'll see a link to Lesson Planning Made Awesome. So if you're interested, make sure you go and check that out. Okay, um, so the first thing I want to talk about is washi tape. And if you've been in the planner world or the crafty world for very much time, you'll know that, that it's kind of a big thing. Um, so washi tape comes in all different widths and of course it comes in all different kinds of patterns so one thing that's great um, to use that I like to use washi tape for is of course to add little pops of color um, just along the top and bottom you could also do it on the side and um, I know a lot of people who like to put it along the edge and then repunch the holes so that they have a little color right here in the middle. So it's great for that kind of thing, but um, since we're talking about functional decorating here, 
Um, one thing that I did want to mention is that it's really great for when you want to um, mark something that goes more than one day. So if you have a week long, so, you know, Dr. Seuss week at school, or you're going to be out for PD for two days or things like that, what you can do is um, mark it off with washi tape. Um, and so let's say I'm going to be out on PD for two days on Tuesday and Wednesday. So washi tape is great because it's just like masking tape. You can rip it. If you want to um, not have to worry so much about, you know, having straight edges and things like that on the tape or just kind of make it look a little bit nicer, you can make it like a banner shape. All you have to do is take the edge of the tape fold it in half and cut diagonally to cut out a triangle from the middle. And obviously you don't have to do this, but I think it for my, you know, obsessive side, it's really nice not to have to worry about making the edges perfectly straight on the ends, if you know what I mean. So, and this kind of indicates that it it's not a definitive start or end. But anyway, so that's one way that you can mark off more than one day. Um, and if you want to write the start and end times or you want to write the actual event that's happening in your planner, um, you can use a Sharpie or some kind of um, marker like that to actually write on the washi tape. So I'll put the start and end times. That doesn't make sense, but that's okay. And then we'll put PD. Okay, so um, that's one thing that you can do with washi tape in your planner. I also, um, the nice thing about washi tape is that it's very cheap and it's pretty readily available. So um, if you don't have the funds or the time um, or, you know, really the space to buy a whole bunch of different planner supplies, Washi tape is really good because you can get it in so many different patterns and actually um, you can find at craft stores tubes that have all different coordinating colors and patterns in one set. And so if you're not really um, confident in mixing and matching patterns and colors and things, you can get one of those sets and then you'll know that they all coordinate with each other. But um, you can use these instead of stickers to draw your attention to certain events or to um, color code different things. So um, you can, I will sometimes use, you saw in this week that I used little, these were pre-made little stickers um, that I used to mark um, my social media posts so that it just makes it easier for me to mark off all the different information that I have in that one spot. Um, which I'll talk about more in a minute. But you can also make your own banner. So the same way I made that, just cut a shorter piece and do the same little cut. And then um, you have a little banner sticker, which you can use for the same kind of thing. And again, you could do all different patterns. You can do the same thing um, to mark different classes or grades or meetings that are happening during um, the school day. If you want to color code your different classes and you want to really draw attention to that information and um, show the different classes that are happening, you could do a little banner sticker and you probably want to use one of the thinner washi tapes, but you could do it sideways like that and you could also write on the washi tape itself, the whatever the grade level is. And you know, this pattern is kind of hard to see, but you get the idea. Um, and another trick that you can do that makes washi tape even more versatile is if you have a thicker tape like these, but you want to use it in a smaller space like that one, um, rather than having to buy a whole bunch of different sizes, if you have a paper cutter, which most teachers have access to one at school, if nothing else, um, and you can see I've done a lot of this and I keep my scraps as long as I can, um, but you can 
cut it down to whatever size you want and it's really easy. It seems like way too much work but so cut a piece, stick it on there, cut it and you could cut it smaller if you wanted but this one you probably don't need to and now you've got two thinner strips of washi. So actually because I'm always looking to save money and time I often will use a thicker washi like this and cut it in half lengthways like I just showed you and use one half on each side um, when I'm lining the top and bottom like I like to do and that way you're using half as much tape actually. So those are a few things you can do with washi and um, you know of course there are endless possibilities depending on what kind of tape you have. If you have a polka dot um, tape you can um, make the to-do list into little check boxes. You could even, I one time went a little crazy and obviously had way too much time on my hands and I had a, some washi tape that had little stars or something on it so I cut out the little stars and used them as check boxes. Now that's a little extreme but it just goes to show you that you can use washi a lot of different ways. So um, that's my first supply, washi tape. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about is pens. So I already mentioned color coding um, information to make it easier to find what you're looking for. Um, so music teachers, of course, we always have lots of different things happening at once. I personally have a color assigned to each grade and I have a color assigned to choir. So um, anytime I'm doing anything where I'm labeling a grade, I always use those colors. Um, you don't have to do that, but even just differentiating the colors that you use when you're doing things like that will help draw your eye to the right information. So I, um, I used to write the entire lesson plan in whatever the color was. Um, and I found that a little tedious and also it meant if I wanted to be able to make changes to my lesson plans because these are erasable pens um, which I'll talk about in a second if I wanted to make changes I had to bring all the colors or else it wouldn't match which is of course a huge problem for me um, so if that doesn't bother you then it's fine but what I um, have ended up doing is I just write the actual name of the class so second grade is blue so I'll write the name of the class in that color and it just helps when I'm looking at all this information crammed into one space to be able to see that color I can look through the week and see where my second grade classes are a lot more easily than if I just wrote all of it in black for example um, so you can do that with different colored pens and obviously um, you don't have to use erasable pens I really love them because I make changes to what I write down all the time and I like being able to color code like I said. I suppose I could use colored pencils but it just doesn't look as neat and these are a super fine point. These are point three. Um, they're the Friction Ball Slim erasable pens and I'll leave a link to those on Amazon um, below as well. But these are really awesome if you want to be able to write in pen but not have to worry about um, making changes because white out that will just get crazy. If you don't care about that kind of thing then a lot of people really like these pens. These are the Stedler pens. I use these for writing on notes and stuff. I don't tend to use it too much in writing in my actual planner pages because um, they're not erasable but they write really well. They're really nice pens and they have a pretty fine point as well. So these are, yeah, these are point three. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's a little bit different. It's not a ballpoint pen. But um, so those are another good option and these are pretty much everywhere as well. And of course you can use whatever other pens you have as well but so yeah color coding. Um, besides color coding the grades and classes though another thing that you can do is color code different categories of information. So I mentioned at the beginning that this is not just my teacher planner it's also my life planner. 
So um, one thing that you can do is um, assign a color to, for example, if you have kids at home, I have two daughters. Um, so right now I don't really have to manage too much because they're only five. But, you know, if you have a kid who's going to soccer practice and another kid who's going to ballet class and all these different schedules that you're trying to juggle, if you assign a color to each child, it's easy to write in the information in that color. And then again, it just draws your eye to that information when you're looking at the whole page with all the information on it. Um, you can also do things like do all your meal planning in one color and all of your bills that you have to pay in another color, that kind of thing. Um, so that's pens and color coding. Um, another supply that a lot of people use, and if you go and uh, Google or search for um, planner stickers on YouTube or Etsy, you will find so, so, so many um, posts about this. So I'm not going to get into all the different things that are out there and available, um, but stickers are another great way to draw your eye to certain information and organize information into sections within an area in your planner to make it easier for you to find what you need when you're looking at it. Um, and um, I want to show you that you don't have to get certain special stickers that are specifically um, designed for exactly what you need in order to do what you want to do. So um, I have several of these Happy Planner sticker books. You can buy these at Michael's and you can also get them online um, on the Me and My Big Ideas website. Um, but these are designed specifically for the Happy Planner, which is a type of planner that they sell at Michael's as well. And the boxes are obviously not the same size as these. Um, so when you have stickers that aren't designed to fit in your planner, um, you can do things to kind of modify what you have, or, you know, if they're maybe the right size, but they're labeled with the wrong thing. Um, so I'm trying to find a good example to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that you have a sticker and it doesn't fit in the box. So first of all, you can obviously cut it to fit into the square. And um, I've done this before. Whoops, stuck it down too soon. Um, I've done this before in my planner. If I, I don't often use these big squares like this, but um, if you have um, empty space like I showed you when I had the field day last week, um, things like that. It's kind of fun to add things in like this. So one thing you can do is cut it down and maybe you would want to center this, but you know, you get the idea. So um, you can use stickers that are too big, obviously, by cutting them down. Um, so that's one example, but let me show you one that I use more often, and that's these um, Target dollar spot little labels, and obviously these kinds of labels are out there in a lot of places. So um, these labels, I'm going to show you in the place where I actually use it, which is in the monthly spreads. So I like to use these to mark different days, but they are too long for the boxes. And um, so I could just cut off the sides, but then I would lose the little border around the edge. So one trick that you can do is to actually cut it in the middle, doesn't matter exactly where, and just line up the two sides so that the um, middle of the sticker overlaps. Okay, so now you have a sticker that fits in the box perfectly and you don't have to sit there and, you know, try to 
cut it exactly or do anything like that. Um, let me just show you a few other examples. So um, here is a book that has, okay, here's one that it says um, that it's a shopping list. So obviously you can cut that off. You can also, if you have washi tape, or if you have another sticker, like maybe you have a bunch of bills you need to pay. Um, so you could take this bill pay sticker and put it over that. That's not showing very well. Put it over that title so that it is now a bill paying checklist. So um, you can modify things a lot. One thing that I've done quite a bit is um, I have this page in this book of um, step counts and um, weight trackers, which I don't use. Um, but these little labels I've used quite a bit, actually, by putting another icon, like doctor's appointment, Actually, yes, we use one of these. Um, let's say you have a dentist appointment. You can put these kinds of stickers, and it could be anything, obviously. Um, where'd it go? Here it is. Okay. Put it over the little place where it says steps. And then you've got a little spot where you can write down the time or the name of the doctor or whatever um, in that spot. And it really draws your eye to that information. And you don't have to waste those stickers just because you're not counting steps. So um, there are a lot of ways that you can modify stickers that you get. Um, I'll show you one more thing that's maybe a little bit more complicated but is something you can do if you find yourself with stickers um, where you know you have some that you use a lot and some that you don't. Um, so let's go back to, well, even on these. So let's say you want to just be able to use this whole box to write information rather than covering it up with an icon or anything like that. You can take some plain sticker paper, which at the edge of any sticker sheet, you're going to have plain paper. So um, you can take that and cut a piece the size that you need. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure this out, but um, you know, cut it down to the size that you want and then just stick it over the word and then you can write in it. Um, without having that word in the spot. So you still have that full border around the sticker. So you get the idea. That's a way to kind of white out really easily um, without having white out. And it, you know, covers up the letters better usually. So let me get this back off. Okay. Another way to use stickers is to actually um, do a little bit more DIY DIYing. So um, I have these Avery all-purpose labels, um, which I got, I think, at Staples. They have them at Amazon, Walmart, all different um, places. And you can get a lot for very little money. Um, and I just got the plain ones. And then, as you can see here, when I, where I was testing them out, um, I colored the stickers to whatever color I want using Sharpies. So you can use plain old Crayola markers or whatever, but um, anything that has a um, bigger tip, because obviously you don't want to be coloring in a sticker with a little ballpoint pen. But um, I, if you decide to do this, I recommend, <laughs> um, I pre-colored stickers in little strips and then um, what I use them for is icons. And actually, I get even more bang for my buck out of these 
I use one sticker for two, I split them in half. So um, if you have um, little icon stamps, which you can get at a lot of craft stores now, they have little planner icons. Um, these are really helpful for, again, drawing your eye to certain information and if you have different categories. So um, let's say I have um, a meeting. So I'm going to use the glasses. And um, for these clear stamps, these clear little rubber stamps, you need a little acrylic box block, which most of the stamp sets that I've seen at craft stores lately come with a little block. So, But um, you can get whatever icon it is that you want, stamp it on the sticker, and obviously you could cut the sticker into whatever shape you want. You could use it as it is. Um, what I do because again, I'm trying to put a lot of information in a small space um, is I cut it in half and use it like this to um, Show different icons. So I'll have a different icon for business Social media icons and things like that, but that could mark a meeting and then right next to there I could write the time and the subject of the meeting and things like that so that's another way that you can pretty easily um, DIY some stickers and make them whatever icons that you want instead of going out and trying to find or having stickers custom made um, with the exact icons that you need. Um, the last kind of stickers that I'll show you are a little more decorative, but they can also be functional. So. Um, these sticker books are another thing that are available um, in a lot of different places these days. Um, Michael's, Walmart, Target, uh, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. Um, and there are these little $1 books that um, have some kind of theme. So I buy them, first of all, I share them with my daughters. <laughs> um, but um, I also use them to add in, like you saw, if I'm feeling particularly crafty, add in some more seasonal things. It's just fun for me. But a lot of these sticker books will have some smaller stickers in um, the same shape um, with lots of different colors. So for example, these starfish, you could um, use these to actually mark different things. And I've done this before a lot, um, like around Christmas time when I'm counting down certain days, but if you, um, rather than doing an icon, you could use these to add a little more fun decoration. And again, these books are so cheap. Um, and then you can write your information next to that. Um, if you want to use the smaller stickers from these books for that sort of thing. So these kind of serve, um, a lot of purposes for me. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about for uh, functional decorating is different kinds of paper pads. So um, first of all, because again, as I mentioned before, I am a um, scrapbooker, or I used to be, um, I have a lot of paper pads like these that you find at craft stores that are 12 by 12 size. Um, and if you want to add a little more decoration, if you want to do things like cover up this um, note section and just make it decorative and then you can write over it or whatever you want to do, these are really great for that. Um, they also usually come with a few pages like this that have these quotes. And these are really great if you want to add them to dividers or covers or if you want to stick them um, in your actual planner, if you have the space for that kind of thing. Um, or you can laminate them and punch holes in the side and stick them in as like a journaling card and you could journal on the back. It's just a fun way to add a little more decoration and inspiration into your planner. 
but these are really versatile too because just like those washi tape tubes that I mentioned, these are all coordinated to go with each other. So if you want, again, a cheap way to get a lot of coordinating elements that um, you can add, use to add color, you can cut a little piece, you could um, add it down here, you could add a little strip on the sides the way I do with the washi tape, you could do that with paper. Um, another thing you can get for, uh, even more cheaply is these little um, list pads and these are usually a dollar or less and a lot of times they have the little magnet on the back but um, these are really thin sheets of paper so they're nice because they don't bulk up your planner too much and because they're long um, I use these a lot when I'm covering up uh, when we have like a one day holiday I'll cut this out and glue it in um, to block off the lesson planning section for that day it also fits pretty well in the notes section if you want to add some color like I did on um, this one to um, part of your planner. It's really easy to just cut it and glue it in. Um, and then the last type of paper is sticky notes. So um, sticky notes, obviously you can also find a lot of places. I really like using sticky notes in the notes section in particular because um, I use the notes section a lot for taking notes at meetings, for brainstorming ideas, for to-do lists for a particular project like the concert that's coming up or um, things like that. And I usually need to be able to access that information from week to week. So um, if I put that on a sticky note, then I can take it out at the end of that week and move it to the next week um, rather than having to rewrite that information. Um, it's also really nice to have sticky notes when you're planning ahead, but you're not exactly sure um, if the um, event is going to be on the day you thought it was. So especially if you're not using fancy erasable pens like I do, um, you can take one of these smaller sticky notes um, and you can find the tutorial for how to make your own dashboard like this really easily on my blog. Um, you can take, if you're planning ahead, like I said, just um, write the information on the little sticky note and then later if you find out that um, the, the date has changed, you can obviously move it really easily. Um, and it's also another really cheap and easy way to draw your eye to certain information if you want to color code without having to have a bunch of different pens. All right, so I think that just about does it for um, functional decorating for your teacher and life planner. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up um, to let me know what kind of videos I should be making in the future. And if you haven't yet, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and head over to my blog so that you can keep up with everything that's happening over there as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye!